I, I'm going to preach swiftly today. Um, um, I, I'm going to pick up the same passage, the same text we read out of last week. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I want to read uh, a portion of it from 1 John 4. It says, those who are loved by God, let his love continually pour from you to one another. Because, everybody say it, God is love. And everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences intimate knowledge of him. The one who does not love has yet to know God, for God is love. And the light of God's love shineth within us, and when he set his matchless son into the world so that we might live through him, this is love. And he loved us long before we loved him. Can everybody say amen to that? And say, he loves me more than he loves you. How many believe that you're his favorite? Yeah. Yeah. You ought to tell somebody, he's my fa- I'm God's favorite. I'm God's. Go ahead. If you don't believe it, nobody else will. <laughs> and it was his love, not ours. And he proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrifice offering to take away our sins. Can we just rejoice over that? Come on, can we rejoice over that? Because we're all a bunch of dirt bags that God loved while we were yet sinners, and he just come to love us. And he said, I'm going to love you while you're yet in your sin, and I'm going to pull you out, and I'm going to just put the joy of the Lord in your life. That's beautiful. I'm still glad he's... There's a song we sang when I was a kid growing up. He's still working on me. How many is he still working on to make me what I ought to be. Took just a week to make the moon and the stars or something like that. I can't remember the word. Yeah, Mars. How patient and loving he must be because he is still working on me. He's still working on me. Thank God for that. And delightfully, loved ones, he loved us with such tremendous love then loving one another should be our way of life. I want to talk about today something that I love to preach about. One of my favorite subjects to preach on is loving other people. And it's so easy for us to say we love when it don't cost us a doggone thing. It's so easy to say, oh, I love, we got, the, we got love, just, oh, I love you. You ever people tell you, they just say, hey, I love you, man. And you're thinking, no, you don't. Yeah. I love you as long as it doesn't cost me anything. And we throw that word around, love around, just very frivolously. But really, it's a very, 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 very valuable, priceless word. To say I love you should be something that's something with meaning and power and passion not just, hey, dude, what's up? I love you, man. So casual. I love you, bro. I love you. I love you, man. Hey, I love you, man. But there, there's something that when you really love, it costs you something. And Jesus laid down his life. He said, this is going to cost me something, but I want to show you what love looks like. And we're not defined by how much we are loved, but we're defined by, defined by how much we love other people. So often in our selfish world, and I talked about this last week, we always are defined, we feel defined by how much people love us. But the truth of the matter is, is how much do we love people should be what defines us and what makes us a lover of God and a lover of people. Because in the end, nothing we do or say in our lifetime will matter as much as how we love. Now, how many in here like gifts? Okay, come on, I want some truth in here. How many like gifts? How many love Christmas time? How many love birthdays? I love birthdays the most because Christmas time, everybody's getting a gift, but birthday, I'm just getting a gift, <laughs> right? Right? I didn't really understand birthdays until I started hanging around with Michelle because Michelle don't have birthday. She has birth month, and she works it all the way to the end. She works that birth month. Yeah. And, and so when I was a kid growing up, we had birthday parties, and there'd be a few little things, some cake and ice cream. 
But now birthday parties are like, I mean, they're like festivals. It's crazy. It's crazy what goes on at a birthday party. And, 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 uh, but birthdays or parties are very special. It's a very time of celebrating and, and, and loving people and showing your love for people. And uh, I think birthdays are important, and we love gifts. But the Scripture tells us it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So our identity not, does not fall in what I receive, but it falls in what I give or what I share or what I give away. It's so important that I love with this ability to s- surrender my life, but also surrender my things and say, I will love people with everything that I have and everything that I am. You know, I've always said it's, it's, it's more important to me that when I die, y'all remember this, okay, so you write this on my tombstone. <laughs> it's more important to me that says that he loved others than to say he was a good dad or a good husband or a good preacher or good anything else because if I can if I can follow the commandment to love the Lord God with all my heart soul and might and if I can love others the way that he's loved me that will be what I would like to be said about me and I want to love people even when it hurts even when it hurts it's it, it because if you truly love people all of these things in life that you want to accomplish and the things that you want to see happen in your life, if you truly love people, those things are going to become very natural to you. But if you're selfish, self-absorbed, all about me, you'll find yourself without very many friends, without very many people caring about you, without, without a whole lot of love coming to you. But when you pour out love, you pour out love and you truly love. You cast your bread upon the water and it will come back to you pressed down and running over. Because loving people changes the world around you. If we're going to truly love others, then we will, it will mean loving when it's painful. And when people do you wrong and they say unkind things to you. There's one thing that's happened with this society that we live in with the social media, and I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on this, but uh, it's proving more and more that the more young generation and old generation live their life on social media, their relationships and their connections are through this, and it's breaking down the very fiber of true love because true love sometimes gets in your Kool-Aid. And people can say stuff on social media and not have to face any consequences of it. Not really. Because people kind of just got whatever. They're just ranting. Another ranter. But when you love people and you have this intimate relationship with them, sometimes that love hurts because you get offended. You get wounded. Sometimes people say things to you that doesn't feel good. How many's married? How many's ever had your spouse say something you didn't feel good? How many's got kids? How many's got a friend, one friend? And they say things to you that doesn't always feel good. One of my best friends is sitting on this front row right here today. And, and I, I, two of my best friends, Michelle will be offended with me, but, she, she, but I'm talking about Tim. He's my second best, never mind. <laughs> There's a whole story behind all that. But he said some things to me through life that really offended me. It didn't seem to bother him near as bad as it did me. But you know what? I can say this honestly, that there are times in life when we, have, we say things that are crushing, but you'll know a friend because a friend will see you through the storm of your life. When life gets difficult, they hang with you. But the Bible says to have a friend, you must what? Be a friend. And I preach this so many times because I don't think that the church is where we are to be in loving people. I think most of our love is very shallow and very self-absorbing because when the moment love hurts, we want to find somewhere else 
some, some way to push it back or some way to deal with it. But when with truth comes in love, and love is sometimes difficult, but then learning how to stick and hang with a buddy, hang with a friend, see it through, and love them beyond what feels good. Because love doesn't always feel good. Our response to one another requires us to stay the course. And not inquire whether someone is worthy or not. Oh, let me preach just a little bit. Oh, let me decide whether, Abby, or whether you're worthy to be loved or not. So let me give you the worthy test. Most of the worthy test that we deal with has to do with feeding how it benefits me. How, what am I going to get out of it? That's the worthy test. But sometimes the worthy tests are to be just because I love somebody just because they're a human being. They may not walk like me, talk like me, speak like me, go where I go, do what I do. They may be from a different place in life. I don't get to choose that. I just get to love like crazy. Let's talk about loving like crazy. What does Jesus say about loving like crazy? He says this in Luke 6. He says, but if you will listen, I say to you, love your enemies and do something wonderful for them in return for their hatred. Mm. Well, if you can't say, oh, amen, say, oh. <laughs> it didn't say, it, it, let, let's read that again. But <laughs> if you say, you love your enemies, then do something wonderful for them in return for their hatred. <laughs> when someone curses you, bless that person in return. When you are mistreated and harassed by others accept it as your mission to pray for them oh come on somebody <laughs> it's getting quiet in here all right <laughs> to those who despise you continue to serve them and minister to them if someone takes your coat give him the gift of your shirt as well oh come on let me preach now <laughs> if someone steals my coat <laughs> If someone took my coat, and it's cold now. I'm not talking about took my coat in the summertime when I didn't need it. But in the wintertime, he said, if someone takes your coat, ask them if they want your shirt also. That's good. To those that despise you, contend to serve them and minister to them. If someone takes your coat, give him your gift of your shirt as well. And when someone comes to beg from you, give to that person what you have. And when things are wrongly taken from you, do not demand them to be given back. However, you wish to be treated by others as how you should treat everyone else. Now, that's a good standard right there. How do you want to be treated? What, what's your measure? What's your level of expectancy of how you desire people to treat you? That's how you should treat others. Are you really showing true love by only loving those who love you back? Even those that don't know God will do that. Are you really showing compassion when you do good deeds only to those who do good deeds to you? Even those who don't know God will do that. If you lend money only to those you know will pay you with credit, is that your character? Even those who don't know God do that. But love your enemies and continue to treat them well. And when you lend money, don't despair if, you don't ever, if it's never paid back for it's not lost. I always try to make a policy not to lend money at all. Just give it away. That way I'm never holding anybody in contempt because they didn't pay it back. Come on, can I get a better amen? <laughs> Just here, take the money. I'll pay you back someday. God bless you. Then I don't ever expect it back. 
But you know what? I've never not had God not repay me. Not one time. It's not lost. You will receive a rich reward, and you will be known as a true children of the Most High God, having the same nature. For your Father is famous for his kindness to heal even the thankless and the cruel. Show mercy and compassion for others, just as your Heavenly Father overflows with mercy and compassion for all. Now, I'm not going to be much longer, so I just want you to listen to me just for a few more minutes. This week, I was driving past the church early in the morning. And I saw a man walking out from behind the church, and he was wearing a hoodie. And I noticed, and I, then I noticed as I passed a little further that Tammy was outside cleaning the front glass. So uh, Hannah was in the car with me, and so I, I did a U-turn in the middle of the road. It's probably illegal. I did a U-turn in the middle of the road because I wasn't sure if she was aware of this man who was walking around in our parking lot. And by the time I got back to where uh, he was, he was across the street and he was in the dumpster across the street. So I, I pulled up, Hannah and I pulled up, and I asked him, I, says, uh, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm looking for food. I'm hungry. I said, well, look, buddy, I got some food in the car. I'm going to give you some food. I said, but I would think that you need to be very careful because there's been lots of break-ins around here and people are a little bit on the edge and you may be hungry and looking for food, but they may not know that and, um, and you, you could end up in jail. So I would be very cautious if I were you. In a few seconds, the, young, the, the gentleman broke down and he began to, he pulled his hoodie off of his head, he pulled his cloak back from him so that I could see his face, and he said, I must confess that I'm one of those that broke into your church. And I took some clothes because we were very, very cold. He said, and I'm sorry for that. I apologize. I apologize for coming and taking those things. I said, well, buddy, you didn't steal those things from us. You stole those things from people that are just like you because when you took those things and they, you, did what you use what you needed and got rid of the rest others could have used those same things we drove off and i got to thinking i've never been hungry in my life not one day matter of fact i overeat most of the time most of the time and at my house and i mentioned this a few weeks ago at my house oftentimes we throw away enough food to feed half of hammond Table scraps, stuff that we left over, stuff our overcooking. Just this past week, we put a ton of food in the trash can and out of the refrigerators. And I told Angela, I said, we waste so much food, so much food going to waste. I've never been hungry. I've never had to look in a dumpster for, clo for, for clothing and food and those kind of things. I've never had to steal. And it's so easy for me to start judging someone listen to me, and counting their worthiness whether to be loved or not because of the condition that they're in. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Can I help you this morning, beautiful women of, men and women of God? It's so easy for us to miss out on an opportunity for ministry. To move past our frustration with, I, yes, I don't like being broke into. Let me be the one to confess. When I come to the church and, and, and somebody meets me at the door and say, Pastor, we got broke into again. Someone stole our stuff again. Someone knocked the doors down. Someone pried up. Yes, it's so frustrating. It's so like, why? Why? But I've never been desperate. As a matter of fact, most of us in this room, maybe not all, but most of us in this room are pretty spoiled. Most of us in this room have been in the standards of 
what real poverty is, we've been born and raised with a silver spoon in our mouth. If I could be like Jesus today, if we could be as a church to be like Jesus, and I'm not just, I don't want you to get focused, and someone came to me last, last time I talked about this, I had some kids come, and they wanted to be the investigators. They wanted to go find out. I'm not, I'm not even talking about being break, the man breaking in. I'm talking about loving people. I don't want you to lose your focus this, this morning. Because there's, there's people all around us every day, and, and some of these people that are around us, maybe they're not poor, maybe they're not breaking in buildings, maybe they're not stealing clothes or trying to find some food. Maybe they have all the money in the world. They have everything in life, but they don't have a friend. They don't have someone. I got friends. I got people that I can call on. I got, I got people that I can depend upon. I got people in this room I can pick up the phone, call you, and say, look, I've I'm, 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 I'm got a bad day going down. I need some help. You'll jump up from where you are and come help me out. You know, there's people in the world, they've pushed everybody back. I had a friend one time I called up and He's got a good bit of money, and this particular day that I called him, he said, hey, he answered the phone, and I said, hey, man, I was said something to him about something. He immediately responded, says, I can't give any more money out. I can't donate another dollar. Well, I didn't even call to get him to donate a dollar. But what I heard from behind there is the only time people call me is when they need something. The only time you pick up the phone is when you need another donation, when, when you need another dollar, when you need another. And I pick at my kids sometimes, and I was like, yeah, the only time you call me dad is you need another dollar. Right? I don't really mean that, though. I got great kids. But sometimes we isolate and we cut people off, and because there's been this, because of only feel like we're only good for for what people can get out of us or what and so people live in loneliness and brokenness and and hurt so i'm gonna bring this back around this morning as i close you know jesus jesus went about doing good and he helped the people that were broken and he helped people that were wounded and he helped people that was bruised and he helped people that had nothing and he gave of himself without reservation he gave him himself and today i don't want you to get just focused on and say well pastor wants us to go and give to the poor yeah i want you to do that pastor wants us to do that i want you to give of everything that you have i want your life to be i want my life to be a life that says god i'm going to forgive those who wound me i'm going to forgive those who speak evil against me i'm going to love those who are broken i'm going to love my hey i'm going to love myself come on somebody but I'm going to love myself so that I can love others properly. And I'm going to give out of my very being of everything that you did for me on the cross, God. I'm going to live a life of giving. What would happen if we would become more intentional about broken people around us? I just wrote this down as it came to my thoughts. Like, what if I took $100 a month and I set it aside just to help other people? And I thought, well, some people might think $100 is a lot of money. So I broke that down to just daily, $3.20. What if I just took $3.20 a day out of my budget to help other people? I might have to pass Starbucks up. Doggone, I can't get Starbucks this morning. My life is over. I might have to pass up that little snack that I eat every day, that little treat that I have every day. I, 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 love, I, love, I love this time of the year because we go right from Valentine's to Easter and my favorite candy is Easter candy. <laughs> I love Easter candy. I like Easter candy more than I do Christmas candy. I love Easter candy. 
And yesterday I was at Walgreens and I went in to get some hair products. And you know what happened, Kay? I was walking by the Valentine's candy aisle and it said 50 off. And I said, "Woo, hallelujah. Let me grab some of them Skittles. Come on. I didn't even think twice about spending a few extra dollars on a little 50 off candy. For me. No, I shared it. But nevertheless, it's just the little bitty things that we don't think about every day in our life, how we could really change somebody's life with a little blessing, with a little love, with a little care, with a little tenderness, with a little, hey, buy them a meal. Hey, write them a card. Hey, send them some kind of love. Share your life with other people. And so in this Valentine's season, we talked about loving God last week, and we talked about how, how we should love God with all our heart, soul, and strength. But then he says, love your neighbor as yourself. And how we could just go to the next level as a Christian. Not, don't, don't wait for somebody else to do it. Just say, for me, for me. I want to go to the next level. Marvin, I'm going to be responsible. I can't be responsible for Miss Deborah. I got to be responsible for Marvin. Marvin's going to go to the next level of loving people. I'm going to love like I've never loved before. I'm going to give my heart like I've never given my heart before. I'm going to share the goodness of God in my life like I've never shared before. I'm only responsible for me. Somebody says, well, we can't change the whole world, but we can change one person's world. We could change one person's life. We could transform one person's day. It would be worth it all. And for my third closing, I know I said I was closing two times already. So for my third closing, is we got so many opportunities to do that. Matt, I want you to stand for just a minute. Come up here, Matt. Just come up here. Come up here. Um, Aaron, come here for just a minute. Have y'all ever seen Aaron's frown? I've never seen Aaron <laughs> frown. Come up here. John, won't you come today and represent Mexico? Come on up here, John. I love all these people. I even love this old codger right here. <laughs> Taking the Mexico team in. This week, they leave Thursday for Mexico. Aaron's got RFK, Royal Family Kids. Every Tuesday and Thursday of the week, uh, Matt, representing Daily Bread, serving over, I think they're serving over 400 hot meals a day. Everybody say, that's amazing. That's amazing. How, many, how many meals are y'all serving, like, most of the time? Four what? You know? 425, 460. 425 to 460 meals every Tuesday and Thursday. You know what they need? They need hands. You know what she needs? She needs hands. You know what we need in Mexico? We need hands. We need people. These are just opportunities that we have right here that are organized in this church so people can help. It doesn't include your daily life and the people you bump into and just becoming your everyday routine doesn't include the outreaches that we do. It doesn't include all that. These are just three opportunities that we have right here in this house that you can just take everything that God's given you to serve other people with and transform the world. So why are you saying that, Pastor? I'm saying because if you say, well, I don't know what to do, I'm giving you some opportunities to, to plug in. I'm giving you some places that you could plug in. I'm giving you some places you could say, hey, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up and go serve somebody opportunities to change people's world I want you to stand with me this morning I'm thankful for what's happened in here this morning I'm thankful for the move of God that we feel the presence of God that's in this house I'm thankful God just began to speak to our hearts this morning to break off the some of those things out of our life and and see God do some amazing things. Over the next few weeks, we're going to see lots of changes around this house. And, and there's lots of opportunities if you want to come help to serve here at the house. We're making some changes, but I, I'm not even going to get into all that today. I just want you to know I, I was supposed to say that at the beginning of the message. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But I want you to just close your eyes right now. And I just want you to think about the people that you're around every single day of your life. I want the Lord to begin to speak to you about somebody that's in your circle. Maybe it's a coworker, a family member. So, Pastor, I don't have anybody in my life. Well, maybe you need to get out more. I want you to just think about somebody that God could put in your has put in your circle that you could you could help, that you could speak life into. Now I want you to just start praying over that person right now. Maybe somebody that, that you need to forgive. You need to say, I'm going to forgive them and I'm going to love them. I'm going to love like Jesus. I'm going to love big. I'm going to lay down my pride. Pastor, you don't know how bad they've hurt me. Look, once you free yourself from that just by loving them, I'm going to love big. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, we just thank you.